So before I can explain this story, I just want to set a few things straight. I had this friend who was a twin. They had a younger sister too, but that's irrelevant. Shortly after the twins were born, the mum had a stillbirth and it caused her a massive amount of stress. My friend remembers that when he was younger, he would wake up to his mum in the other room, talking to an empty crib. She would have conversations at strange hours of the night, but apparently, this kind of behaviour is pretty normal given the circumstances. It messed her up pretty bad, and later on she started telling everyone that she was a medium type thing. She claimed that she had a sixth sense and was sensitive to afterlife phenomenon. The older the twins got, the more she started to calm down with the strange behaviour, but she still believed that she had a gift. Now that I've gotten this out the way, I can tell you the creepy experience that happened to me when I was at their house during a boys night. So it was the twins birthday, and the one that I was friends with managed to convince his mum to invite a handful of good friends over. His mum had made plans to go out that night with her new partner, which was great, because we always got up to no good without any supervision. This was the perfect opportunity to get up to some mischief. His mum finally left us alone. After an hour or so of running out of things to do, I didn't know why, but I suggested that we try a Ouija board. I've seen them in movies and thought that it would be hilarious if we tried it ourselves. All the boys agreed and we got to work, setting the table up outside. I cut the letters alongside a yes no and placed them in a circle on a plastic table and I put one of his mum's shot glasses in the middle. I explained the rules to the guys and we were all extremely excited to give it a go. The other twin was tired though. He said that he was going to have a shower and call it an early night. He also didn't like the idea of us using that sort of thing but we continued to do so anyway, despite his concern. We also decided to set up a tripod camera to overlook the table just in case anything supernatural were to happen. We turned it on and started to record. At this point we were all sitting around the table. We placed our fingers on the shot glass and started firing questions into the circle. We were asking stupid immature questions like, Are you gay? Can we speak to Elvis? Nothing seemed to happen, but we were all laughing and carrying on. That is until the glass started to move, but we could tell straight away that it was someone on the table. You could just tell by the way the glass was moving. It was obvious and annoying because I really wanted it to work. We were starting to get restless and were on the verge of giving up on the whole thing because people were being stupid and no one would give it a fair chance. This next bit though is where things get weird. The air became cold and the breeze died down. I remember that chilling feeling, shivering outside in the cold. My eyes started to water and I felt hypersensitive. I'm pretty sure the other guys felt it too. And that's when it happened. The glass started to move randomly. It felt completely different this time. It wasn't being pushed if that makes sense. It was kind of dragging our fingers along the table. The movement was slow and eerie. And at this point we all look up at each other, darting from face to face trying to figure out who is messing around this time. Every single face around the circle looked terrified and confused. The glass moved from letter to letter, not spelling words but only gibberish. I hated the feeling but I needed to know more. I started to ask serious questions this time. Who are you? Still, nothing. The glass was just moving around with no purpose. Then it would stop as if disconnected and start up again. It would get weak, fade back into movement. Are you a person? I asked. The glass moved to the centre and then back down to no. This is the moment when I knew it was a bad idea. The glass started to pick up speed. It was moving around in circles, completely ignoring the letters. Its movements became fast and aggressive. It felt as if it was being pushed into the table really hard. 
everyone was horrified. A few guys even took their fingers off the shot glass in shock, and the remainder of us decided to push on out of curiosity. Are you dead? Another person asked. The glass slowly slid over to yes. Then all of a sudden the lights and all of the power in the house turned off. We were sitting in a pitch black darkness outside with sudden silence. We shot up and broke away from the table. There was a sense of panic in the air and we all started to completely freak out. Then out of nowhere, the power surged back on and the TV started up again inside. The other twin ran outside still wet from the shower only wearing a towel. He came out asking who turned off the bathroom light whilst he was in there. We explained the situation outside with the Ouija board and he refused to believe it. Then I thought, yes, we recorded it with a camera. We ran over to the tripod and grabbed the camera to show him the evidence. The camera was turned off and we were all dumbfounded because it had full battery when we started and we were positive we pressed record. We quickly turned it back on. Yes, the battery bar was just about full and like I thought, we did press the play button. But me being the amateur that I am, I had recorded it on an awkward angle. You couldn't see the table, just the back of our heads. As it played, we got to the part just before the power to the house turned off. And then, so did the camera footage. And the video just stopped. Somehow, the camera turned off at the exact time the power of the house went out. The weird thing was that the camera was a battery and had nothing to do with the house power. The mood that night was ruined. No one was happy or excited. We were all just quiet. Everyone was trying to process what had just happened. Even the twin who was in the shower and confused and now very creeped out. We asked him if he was the one who messed around with the power inside and he swore he hadn't. I believe him to this day. I mean, he was in a towel and wet. I've never messed around with a Ouija board after that chilling experience. What started off as a joke became weird really fast. I had a teacher who had a very similar story. This teacher joked around and wasn't really ever serious, but was funny as hell and an overall good teacher. But when Ouija boards came up, she got extremely serious and told us her bone-chilling story. She had some friends over one weekend and they got bored and they decided to break out the good old household Ouija board. They had asked questions and got weird vibes from some of the answers. They received these answers but pushed on forward. Finally, someone asked when they would die and it went around the circle and Everyone got a decent number in the 80s or 70s, but one girl got the age 19. Granted, they were juniors, seniors in high school, so that was only a few years away. A few years go by and the girl who got 19, as the age of death, was killed by a car while walking on a beach while on spring break. Her friend she was with broke her leg or something. Anyways, she was just 19, one week away from turning 20. The nature of the death and the fact that she was close to her 20th birthday make it so scary because she was so close to defying the Ouija board. Never, ever doing it needless to say. Too terrified to get an answer like that. A couple of years ago, I went to a rehab in Southern California for alcohol and Xanax addiction. My family and friends were beginning to worry about me a lot. So if anything, I did it more for them than I did for myself. Being there for almost four months, we all got pretty close. However, disaster struck when my roommate decided to hit the needle again. Needless to say, it was the last time he ever would, as he overdosed in his apartment and collapsed in his closet with the needle still in his arm. 
This is where some friends and I found him, motionless. We called the emergency services immediately, but it was unfortunately too late. A few weeks passed, and we were still living in the same apartment that he passed away in. Being newly sober, and not really knowing what sober people do with their lives all day, we did a bunch of stuff just to keep our minds off our old habits. This night in particular we decided to use a Ouija board. We sat in the living room and the session began. We said the prayer, put our hands on the planchette and started asking routine questions and got nothing. Disappointed and about to quit, someone had the brilliant idea of going into our friend's room exactly where he passed away. So, sitting in that room, we pulled out everything again, redid the procedure and asked for him. Let's call him Brad. We asked, Brad, are you still with us? Amazingly, the planchette went to yes. Both a little freaked out and excited, we continued. We asked simple things, like if he was okay. And all was well, until we asked Brad why he did it. The planchette went to B-A-D-G-N-E. We thought about this for a while and asked, Brad's gone? The planchette rapidly moved to yes, so we asked who it was. Nothing. Angrily, I screamed, Who the hell is this? The planchette began moving like I've never seen it before. Z-O, 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 over and over again. I had no clue what the hell this was, but I turned to my friend and his face was white. When the planchette finally came to rest, I asked my friend what was wrong. He stammered that we needed to quit, and that we need to stop this now. Him being a huge tough guy, it was strange for me that he was being so scared. Stop being a pussy, I say. That Zozo is a Ouija board demon. He pretends to be friend or family, until he finally reveals himself. I took this and kind of chuckled to myself. Oh really? That friend took off and went back to his apartment while the two of us stayed taunting the demon and cursing him. We finally asked what he wanted and the planchette shot straight to me. Terrified, I asked, what do you want with me? It took off in the direction of H-E-L-L. -L. I stated, you want me in hell? And it shot straight to yes. Are you going to kill me? I asked. The planchette shot back to yes. Getting a little freaked out, I asked, How are you going to kill me? F I R And the planchette shot towards one of the candles, knocking it over to the floor, starting a small fire on the carpet. We quickly put it out, and as we were doing so, looked at the last letter the planchette landed on. E. Fire. Looking at this, we said goodbye on the Ouija board and burnt that board the same night. I refused to sleep in that apartment after that night and broke my sobriety soon after to go back to my home. So, Zozo, so, so, I hope we do not meet again. I have a story on a Ouija board as well. And since this day, 15 years ago, I have never used one since. Before going any further, I don't believe in an afterlife. I'm an atheist, but something that happened years ago when using a Ouija board freaked me out and I will never forget it. It was me, a good friend of mine, John, and a few girls. We were in my house and one of the girls brought a Ouija board. I thought nothing of it. So fast forward into the night, the girls were using it, but myself and John 
or just hanging out talking and having a beer. At one point in the night, we decided we want to get pizza, so John and I go pick up pizza to bring home. When we got back, the girls were a bit flipped out, saying they were getting creepy statements from the Ouija board, stating that spirits were watching us and keeping a close eye on what we were doing. One of the girls said, the spirit said they really watch John Close, but the name was misspelled, so she was starting to doubt that the spirit even existed. It was then that John said he spelled his name, J-O-N. We never knew this. He took out his wallet and showed us his driver's license. His face was white with fear. From that day on, I never wanted a Ouija board in my home. I can't explain how that happened that day, but it was enough to really make me think. Hey guys, it's Mort here, and thank you so much for listening. I want to give a massive shout out to the Sinful Savant for narrating two of the four stories in this video. I highly recommend him, and he has some wicked content which I really hope you guys check out. Remember, this is a collaboration, and there are eight parts to the video. So, go follow us over onto his channel to finish off the other four stories by clicking the link on screen now. Trust me, the others are brilliant, you don't want to miss them. Or if you've just come from his channel, why not stick around and listen to more creepy true stories? And don't forget to spam the like button. So, it's confirmed. You guys want seven Skimwalker stories, and that is what you'll get. And seeing as it will be with us soon, what do you want me to focus on in my next big video? Just post your suggestions in the comments and the most popular one wins. But hurry, I'll only be counting votes for the next five days. Also, remember that if you have a story that you wish to submit, send it over to my email which can be found in the description below to have it featured in a future video. Just remember to say that you give me consent to use it though. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter for updates of behind the scenes. But anyway, for now guys, I'm going to sign off. Stay awesome. And I'll see you in the next one. One guy went headfirst over a rope wheeler. His hand got snagged on a bit of rope sticking out and it pulled him in. He hit his head on the floor when he went over and broke his neck.